Saturday mornings always mean pancake morning for us. I make a huge batch every weekend and we love to sit around the table as a family together and eat them and then watch some Saturday morning cartoons. So when All Cloud asked me to share one of my favorite recipes, I knew I had to show you my brand new grain-free pancakes from my cookbook celebrations. Let's get into the kitchen. I'm going to show you how it's done. The thing I love about this recipe is it's all just made in a blender. On a crazy, hectic Saturday morning with your kids, the last thing you want to be doing is doing a ton of dishes afterwards. So I try to minimize cleanup and ease by just keeping it all in here. So I'm starting with three eggs. And anytime you're making anything in a blender, really, you want to try to put your liquids on the bottom. It just helps everything blend a lot easier and gives that blade some room to move around. And I'm adding some unsweetened almond milk, a little bit of melted coconut oil, and then we have cashew flour. You can also use almond flour if that's what you have on hand. I just love the way that cashew is so mild in flavor. It also makes these really nice and fluffy. Some coconut flour. And then we have arrowroot, cream of tartar, and baking soda. So the cream of tartar and the baking soda actually acts as a grain-free baking powder. You're just kind of making it up really quickly you can also buy it if you'd like as well. Just make sure it doesn't have cornstarch in it. Some palm sugar for some sweet, and a pinch of salt. So not only is a blender just an easier way of doing this, but it also helps give the batter a lot of air in it, which helps those pancakes rise. And it helps make them really nice and smooth, so it resembles more similarly to a regular wheat flour. All right. So coconut flour takes a couple minutes to absorb some of the moisture, so I'm just going to let that sit while I get my pan preheated. I'm using the All Cloud HA1 Nonstick Griddle. The thing that I love about it is the pancakes flip really easily, but it's nonstick, it's scratch resistant, and it's free of all the harmful chemicals. All right, I'm going to turn this back on. Perfect, we are all set. So most gluten-free pancake mixes in the store taste like cardboard, if we're honest. They get a little bit dry, they don't typically rise very well. And so over the years, I have created many pancake recipes. This one is probably my all-time favorite, and that's why it went in celebrations, because it's perfect for any special occasion. We make them every weekend. I like to make double batches and put them in the freezer, so if I'm traveling for work, the kids can still enjoy their little tradition with their dad. So our griddle is heated about to medium heat, and I've greased it just a little bit with palm shortening or coconut oil. And I'm just going to ladle a couple tablespoons at a time of that batter. So there's a few things to keep in mind with grain-free pancakes. <laughs> They're not quite your average pancakes with wheat flour. The batter's a little bit thinner, first of all, which you'll notice. They also don't bubble up as much as you're probably used to with a regular conventional pancake. So what you'll start to see is the edges starting to set, and that's kind of when you know that they're ready to flip. And lastly, I try to keep them on the smaller side just so they're a little bit more manageable. So you could also double or triple the dry ingredients for this, like I did in my Meals Made Simple book. And you could keep those in your pantry so that you could just throw these together quickly any Saturday morning. So like I said, these freeze really well. I just make a ton up and I let them cool and then I just put them in a freezer safe bag or container and we pop them into the toaster just to reheat them. So it's a really quick, easy breakfast if I don't have time to make everything up. I always say let the pancakes tell you when they're ready. Don't force them or you're going to end up with a mess. If you can get your spatula under there and they flip easily, then they're ready. The nice thing about this griddle is that they brown really evenly. They also still flip really easily. So as much as I love my other pancake recipes that I created years ago for other books and on my blog, these ones rise so much better. You can already see it. They get so much fluffier. The other ones kind of fell flat as good as they were. And that's in part to the homemade baking powder, but also the little bit of arrowroot in there. It just gives them a little bit more structure. I'll let those guys go for a little bit, and I'm just gonna add another one here. Okay, got my final four here. And I feel done. Perfect. These smell so good. I'm a three stack pancake type of a person. My husband likes to take like five. <laughs> and I'm just going to slice up some banana and strawberries. 
littlest guy started enjoying these as well. We don't do maple syrup on him for him, but he just grabs it and eats it with the fruit. He loves it. And a few strawberries on top. You could also cook some blueberries into these for blueberry pancakes. It's just a really good base recipe that you can kind of have fun with. I always say, if it looks like real pancakes, <laughs> then we've done our job well. Of course, it needs to taste like it as well, too. Mm. They're fluffy and moist on the inside, not a bit dry like some gluten-free pancakes. I think you guys are going to love to serve these to your grain-free families or even your friends that do eat grains. They're going to love them every bit as much. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button. I also love to hear from you in the comments, so let me know what you'd like to see me make next and just say hello. And hit the red subscribe button so you don't miss any future recipes and videos.